be very, very quiet. I'm hunting dragons. Uh... Dragon twax. I can eat. Hey, just a peanut plucking minute. This don't look like plain old Georgia to me. This looks more like Pittsburgh. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. I'd better ask around. I wonder if they speak English in Pittsburgh. Yep, it's Pittsburgh, all right. Good old Smokey. This way went. Never again, never, never again do I take travel hints from Ray Bradbury. Huh. Him and his shortcuts. The last time I took Bradbury's advice, I ended up in the 25th century as a Martian monocle. On Mars yet. This time I end up in some kind of lizard factory. What's up, Duke? What's up, forsooth? Thou art the prisoner of my wants. Wants? Did you say wants? Yes, wants. My spear. My javelin. Oh, that wants. Yes, that wants, thou fire-eating dragon. Fire-eating dragon? Hey, look, Doc, I'm not a fire-eating dragon. I'm a carrot-eating rabbit. See? Listen, dragon, don't try to fool me. I followed thy tracks for all these many moons, and now I'm taking you to King Arthur's court. King Arthur's court? Is that where I am? That Bradbury, what a jokester. Oh well, as they say, when you can't fight it, lie back and enjoy it. In Scarlet Town, where I was born, there was a fair maid dwelling, made every lad cry well a day. Her name was Barbara Allen. Pittsburgh? Camelot. <laughs> Having searched for this terrible dragon a thousand weeks or more, saving hundreds of maidens in distress from distress, having killed platoons of knights in chivalrous combat, I found a trail and tracks of this brimstone swigging dragon. This dreadful sky-towering monster, 
But this trail went through strange and fearsome woods, and I must need whop the heads off seven giants at one sweep. Then I fought a pitched frightening battle with 18 lesser dragons, swaying them all. It's funny, I somehow never thought of King Arthur as being a duck. Then, after my coffee break, Barbecue Dragon makes a mighty tasty dish, Your Majesty. Finally, Your Majesty, I traced this terrible dragon to his wear. Where? I didn't even know I had a wear. Do you perchance mean a burrow? A, a hole in the ground? How about just for laughs, we draw and quarter him first? <laughs> Whatever turns you on. Draw and quarter the varmint! How do you like those apples, Dragon? You're gonna be drawn and quartered. <laughs> drawn? Drawn? Oh, you mean drawn. Like an animated cartoon is drawn. Well, naturally, I know all about that. I've been in the business for years, and I won't even be born until 1940. As for quarters, uh, well, any old place. Nice view, private bath. Will you shut up, you loudmouth dragon? Oh, uh, as to that, um, well, well, I can shut up all right. Uh, anytime anybody asks me to shut up, I always shut up. Shutting up is one of my virtues. I'm considered very shutty-uppy in my crowd. Shut up, shutting up! Now you've hurt my feelings. Other dragons get to shut up. I never get to do anything. <laughs> well, gosh, Harmon, I, I didn't mean to make you cry. After all, uh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Why, you... Take him out and roast him at the stake! Stake? Roast? Me? Roast me at the stake? That stings. He wouldn't dare. He dare. <laughs> well, uh, one thing's for sure. Either I'm Joan of Arc, which I'm not, or according to Mr. Mark Twain, I'm a Connecticut Yankee rabbit in King Arthur's court. If so, then there's gonna be an eclipse of the sun about now. Better check, though. I uh, beg your pardon, Sir Loyna Pork, but uh, would you happen to have the date? Certainly, fair sir. It's a June June one week of the year and no week of the year of our five twenty eight. Five twenty eight. Five twenty eight. It's the right date. Yes, sir, fair sir. And it is two minutes past the hour of noon. In the right time, too. All right, Varlet, start the dragon roast. I'm sorry, but we Varlets have to roast dragons if we're told to. By our superiors. Release me, or I shall blot out the sun! And I will, too. I will smother the whole oit with darkness! Look us now. It happens even now. Why, that dirty twixter, he is a boy the wedding the sun. The, the, the fun! It's vanishing! It's vanishing, all right! What, what, what do I do? It, it's the only fun I have! Everybody knows the king has to have a f f fun! Sorry, schmun! Roast that dragon! Listen, buster! Curb thy fat lip or hide thee to the unemployment office! Uh, I hate rabbit dragons. Release that noble creature and give him half my kingdom! And other valuable emoluments. I still think that was some sort of sleight of hand. Just you wait, Henry Dwagon. Just you wait. I'll get you yet. Thanks loads, Doc. Uh, that eucalyptus overcoat was getting a little itchy. And now, sir, restore the sun, please. Pretty please. Half my kingdom. Uh, emolument. Sure, Doc. Any little thing. Uh, you can come out of hiding now, baby.
Nice trick. Hmm, I uh, don't suppose you'd uh, settle for a quarter of my kingdom, would you? Uh, or an eighth? Uh, Sixteenths are nice, too. Thirty seconds? I'll throw in a second-hand court magician. After all, a, a thirty-second of England is uh, easily equal to two blocks in uh, downtown Dallas. Look, Doc, I don't dig kingdoms, uh, but if thou wouldst grant me a boon, I would like to rent one of your fire-breeding dragons for a while. Well, what for hay? Well, that doesn't seem unreasonable. Probably misses his own people. Thy boon is granted, sir. Actually, I picked it up for a song. Uh, somebody's country shack. But what I really needed was a source of cheap, clean power. That's where the dragon came in. With dragon power, for each ton of brimstone, you get about three million horsepower. Dragon power? Steam power? Electric power. Simplicity itself. Yeah, but, but aren't you, uh, the dragons terribly fero 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 uh, uh, dangerous to work with? No, uh, they're like cats. Feed them and they sleep most of the time. <laughs> it, it's uh, 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 quite remarkable, uh, remarkable, uh, astonishing, uh, astonishing, uh, 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 wonderful, but, uh, but, but how can you make a, uh, a living uh, selling armor to knights who, uh, who already have their armor, armor uh, tin suits? Knights? Why, heck, Doc, I wouldn't make anything for them two-legged tanks. I make armor for endangered species. And they and the endangered species, endangered species, endangered species, species. Uh, yeah, you see, when knights aren't out being chivalrous and uh, stabbing helpless dragons with those 20-foot toothpicks of theirs, they like to get together and kill ferocious foxes and squirrels and deer. So I make armor for them. And uh, in here, we have our display room, where we show our floor models. Uh, for instance, this is our basic fox model, guaranteed to frustrate fox hunters and to send foxhounds to the dentist. This is our deer model, 113A. Absolutely spear-proof, lance-proof, arrow-proof. Furthermore, can be easily tailored to fit moose, elk, antelope, and other members of the ferocious deer family. We call this our Tweety Boyd model. It's unconditionally guaranteed for 10 years against cats. Now, over here, we also have mouse armor. It, too, is designed to frustrate cats. But, uh, we try to be fair. We have cat armor guaranteed to frustrate dogs. <laughs> and this is our latest. Fly armor to frustrate fly swatters. Yeah, but that's absurd. Absolutely silly. How can he fly with all that heavy armor on? Details, details. Now here we have our acne little giant rooster suit. Guaranteed against hatchets. Uh, roosters are allergic to hatchets. I didn't know that. Rattlesnakes don't need much protection, but uh, they get irritable if they're left out. So uh, we made this up. Now here is my masterpiece. It's a porcupine. It's a porcupine. 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 Thanks. Uh oh. Uh oh oh. Look who's tracked us down. Old Sir Elmer of Fudd himself. All decked out in his steel tuxedo. Aha! Caught up with you at last, didn't I, you scoundrelly wabbit wagon? We'll see now how you like a taste of my lance.
All right, what's the big idea? Sticking that toad stabber into my... Oh, turning myself into a wabbit again, eh, Mr. Wise Wagon? Well, it's not going to save you this time. We will meet on the Field of Honor. Field of Honor it is, Doc. But my turns is with a glove trick first. Choose your weapons. Uh, here, Camelot, a battle cry of freedom in in, in advertiser. It's, 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 it's September the 21st, 5 to 28. It's a sports edition. Duel to the death, main event. It's Sir Elmer of Fudd versus Buggis Bunny of Carrot Patchville, U.S. and N.A. Two falls out of the three. Two falls out of three. Two falls out of two. Catch is a catch can't. Merlin of Monroe and Porky of the Pig seconds. It makes you humble and is sort of proud. Listen for part I really dig about being a king. All those idiots down there hacking away at each other. <laughs> and me, safely up here out of it, being hacked is not only stupid, it hurts. And remember, I want you to make dragon cutlets out of that rabbit. And remember, too, he's a patsy for a left hook to the upper epiglottis. Don't worry. I'll give him a left hook right in the epiglottis. Are you ready to enter the list, Sir Bugs? Well, I'm certainly not ready to enter the list of best-dressed knights. Uh, this iron underwear is rather stiff. Let the tournament of the slaughter begin. of the liver, a miss is as good as a mule. Eh, right, mule? But so, what light from yonder window breaks? Well, it certainly isn't Juliet, unless she's grown a mustache. <laughs> Crazy idiot! Can't you see you're tangling up my whiskers? <laughs> Chivalry, <laughs> big deal. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I hates rabbit dragons. Dragon, twice this quaff ward, arrow on for size. It looks higher. And me, miss him, me, miss him, me, 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 
anymore. I'll, I'll die. <laughs> Persistent little devils, aren't they? Rabbit dragon at three o'clock. Ready? Aim? Fire! Rabbit Dragon, prepare to meet your maker. Just a cotton picking minute. You can't use that. Gunpowder hasn't been invented yet. It hasn't? No, it hasn't. And uh, with any luck, maybe it never will be. I could be wrong, you know. Oh, well. Live and loin. God dang coniglion on lapping dragon, rampant frappin' canejo lizard. Well, I guess we have time to take a coffee break uh, before the next episode in this gripping drama. Hey, look at that neat carrot slicer. Pity to leave it out in the open this way. A uh, carrot slice is rust easy, you know. Okay, sweetie, come on out. Don't be shy. <laughs> That's it, Whomsoever girl. Whosoever shall draw the sword from the stone shall rightful king of England be. And anyone who does not like it shall be boiled in baby oil. Me? King? Oh, you've got to be kidding. I, 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 I pledge my allegiance, 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 and my loyalty. Oh, I'm a mighty monarch, mighty monarch, mighty monarch, and I'm a king. Me too, oh mighty king. I pledge my allegiance too. We are thy servants. You know, maybe he wasn't kidding. I am thy loyal subject, your majesty. Well, after all, it is sort of ridiculous for King Arthur to be a duck. This may call for some rewriting of history books, but it proves one thing. The pun is mightier than the sword. <laughs> <laughs> 